Welcome to Queen Anne's County Board of Education for Wednesday, July the 19th. Uh, call to order. Uh, Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education, Queen Anne's County met in closed session to protect the privacy or reputation of individuals concerning a matter not related to public business. Thank you. Everybody's had a chance to uh, look at the agenda. Do I have a motion to approve? Can I have a motion to approve? Um, June 21st closed session and open session, July 12th closed session. And no, 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 we, we got to approve the agenda first. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Motion to approve the agenda. I have second. a second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, we have a, uh, minutes in front of us for June the 21st and 22nd, both closed and open. Has everybody had a chance to look, review them? Yes. Yes. Have a motion to approve? Second. Motion. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, we also have our minutes for July 12th and uh, close and open session. Everybody's had a chance to review them? Yes. Yes. Can I motion to approve the minutes? Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, moving on to informational items. Uh, spotlight presentation. Oh, we're going to skip the spotlight. We we're going to skip that? Okay. Yeah. We're going to take gonna that gonna off. We're going to go with... Um, oh, you're good. Okay, the master silting plant. Yes. 3.02. Which one are we doing? We're doing 3.01. Hey, we, we we've taken off the spotlight rep representation. Yeah. So it's 3.01. 3.01. Okay. The Just facilities sure. plan. Mm-hmm. With Daryl. We're good? Yeah, you're good. Okay. Good afternoon, board members and Superintendent Salins. I am Daryl Barraclough, facility planner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I am here this afternoon to present to you the 2023 Educational Facilities Master Plan for Queen Anne's County Public School. The Educational Facilities Master Plan, commonly referred to as the EFMP, is a long-range planning document that is produced annually by QACPS staff. The EFMP reflects the, operation, the operating procedures of Queen Anne's County Public Schools, a complete facility inventory evaluation, current, projected enrollment current and projected enrollment data, and working collaboratively with Queen Anne's County Planning and Zoning, an in-depth analysis of the planning and community development throughout all of Queen Anne's County. The EFMP is the basis upon which future facility planning decisions are made. In other words, the Educational Facilities Master Plan is the roadmap upon which the Capital Improvement Program is based. COMO requires each LEA to annually produce an updated Educational Facilities Master Plan that has gone before the local board and obtained approval. Typically, this document would have come before you sooner than today, but with my just joining QACPS in June, the document got a very late start. The document was due to be submitted to the state before July 1st. Given the circumstances of when I arrived, we were successful in obtaining an extension to the deadline to August 1st. The EFMP is a two-step process in the development of our future project funding. The EFMP will lay the foundation for our CIP that will be presented in the coming months. Several different documents make up the EFMP. The following slide shows a, be a brief overview of the contents, most of, most of which are the requirements for the EFMP in place by the IAC. This slide shows the date lines that are associated with the EFMP and the C and the C, uh, Capital Improvement Program. A few updates that I would like to bring to your attention regarding the draft copy that each of you were provided for, uh, for review. On page three, the document shows a draft copy of the letter that will, be re that will be forwarded of the approved EFMP to the state. Once the board approval is secured, dates will be inserted where applicable and the document will be signed by the superintendent. Number two, since the production of the draft copy of the EFMP, the non 
discrimination statement on page five has been signed by the superintendent and President Schifanelli. So the fully so a fully signed copy will be part of the final EFMP. Lastly, page 146 of the document will be will be replaced with a copy of the review and approval letter from Queen Anne's County Department of Planning and Zoning, which was received shortly after the draft copy was was prepared and uh, assembled for board docs. Uh, lastly, uh, that wraps up the presentation for the draft copy of the Educational Facilities Master Plan for 2023. Any questions? Any questions? I don't have any questions, updates. I guess one of the major things that and we've been through this at our meetings is that uh, the ninth grade is now moving into Kent Island High School. Correct. All on one campus. So to me, it's a long document with a lot of little numbers that move around and stuff like that. But when I think one of the major things that will be changing this year is Mattapique ninth grade in the middle school will now go to the high school complex and we've made arrangements for all that correct which i think is the, and that is captured in the document it is right yep. but i mean of, of all the things of 148 pages <laughs> that's to me the one that i think the average citizen and people in our community will want to see you know and and, and and that's a change for us correct that is probably the largest mm -hmm. the largest change in the document and i just want to say thank you because i know it's a lot of work to get this together and you were on a really tight timeline i appreciate the waiver and appreciate your effort with it thank so you. thank you it's a tight timeline when you're when you were here for, for a year yeah. <laughs> much less here much for a less, few weeks yeah. yeah we appreciate that any other questions by the board nope, nope. thank you yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Page, 640-1. All right. Board members, Dr. Salen, executive team, for the record, my name is Michael Page, and I am bringing forward the regulation 640 Point one, student nutrition, health and wellness. Um, this, uh, the purpose of this is to present the recommended updates to regulation 640.1, student nutrition, health and wellness. A little bit of background, local school systems uh, are required to write a document that guides local educational ag agencies or school districts efforts to establish a school environment that it promotes school health, well-being, and their ability to learn. Um, this was updated based upon some of the new initiatives that are going forward. Um, and if you all have any questions in regards to that, um, I can answer them for you. What I do want to note is that this is a this document is uh, created through multiple departments. So, curriculum and instruction has a piece of this. Uh, food services has a piece of this. Nurses and and student services. So if there isn't, if there is a question that I can't answer for you, um, I will make sure to get those to them. Anybody have any questions regarding this informational item? The only question I had was under the health education, um, number three, under family life and the human sexuality education. Yes. If someone in the public is viewing this online, how do they know like what the curriculum will be? So they can, they would know in multiple ways. So when a child is enrolled in a, in a health course, that's going to receive that. So that's grades five, grade seven in high school health. Those parents before that class or before that um, uh, uh, unit is started, they receive a parent letter home. So they'll receive a parent letter home. Um, and then with that, they have the information that is being taught within those lessons, and then they all, we also provide them with the the option to opt out of that that specific content. Okay. Um, and then within that, they also get a letter that states if you'd like to view any of the materials to contact the schools and or me. Okay, thank you. And I think that's very important. It is an opt out, and we're starting this in fifth, which is required by state law, and we're putting it at the higher end of our system of our grade levels not earlier correct so we we do start the family life and human sexuality in fifth grade any other questions no okay. thank you thank you mr page thank you. dr kibler uh, 
Uh, good evening, board members, Dr. Salins, and executive team, uh, Dr. Matthew Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. I'm here tonight uh, to present to you a draft of our safe return plan. You might remember we've been doing this for two years now. This was a requirement when, uh, for all school systems when we, reserve, when we received ESSER funds to put a document together to, for how we were going to have a safe return to in-person instruction after the, as the COVID pandemic was going on. Um, when this first came out in the fall of 21, obviously a lot of, there was a lot in there to go by. Um, we haven't really made any changes in the last year and a half on this document because we're basically, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, back to normal. The reason we are still doing this is, again, it was a requirement with ESSER money. We are entering into the last year of the ESSER money. This will be the last plan that we have to submit for this document. There are no changes from when I brought this. We had to do this every six months. There are really no major changes to this document since the February version you saw. Um, a lot of just dates. And it's due August 1st. This doesn't require a vote, but we wanted to make you all aware of, of it here and as well as the public in case anybody would like to provide feedback. And this is be the last one you have to do. <laughs> Correct. I, that was that was like, so we get these weekly transmittals from the state superintendent, and we were supposed to have to do this for another year. This was the first time I was excited to see in the transmittal something that said this would be the last one. Nice. You have something else to do with your free time. Yeah. I'm sure that we will <laughs> Dr. Sales might for find something. To do. <laughs> Any questions by the board? No. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're moving to uh, action items. We just had an update on the uh, educational facility master plan. Mm -hmm. Do I have any? Okay, go with Good afternoon again. I'm Daryl Barraclough, facility planner. Uh, I come before you this afternoon seeking approval of the 2023 educational facilities master plan. Any questions? No nope. Okay, do I have a motion? Can I motion to, sorry, approve the 2023 Educational Facilities Master Plan? Second. I have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We got it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Page again. <laughs> So this action item is the elementary K-5 to HMH science dimensions, um, interactive text, and the consumables. So the purpose of this is to approve the contract between Queen Anne's County Public Schools, Hoot and Mifflin Harcourt uh, Publishing Company to purchase HMH science dimensions grades five and through, sorry, grades K-5 to interactive work text and consumables. This has been a contract that we've been uh, working with them since 2017. The physical impact of this uh, purchase is five, uh, $56,636.91. It was budgeted for in this, this year. Uh, this is through curriculum and instruction and the account number is provided. The action is that the superintendent recommends the board approves the contract between Queens County Public Schools and Hooten Mifflin Harcourt HMH Publishing Company to purchase the HMH Science Dimensions Interactive Work Text Consumables for grades K-5 in the amount of $56,636.91. This is in our current budget. Yes, current. sir. This is for FY24. Any questions by the board? No. The only question I had is why is Churchill Elementary only got four units and then the price is only 108? Why are they so low compared to all the other schools? So is that for the consumable portion of it? Uh, and so Churchill Elementary um, had had extras of the text, okay. I believe. So what ended up happening is they didn't have to they didn't have to purchase the specific interactive text this year. Okay. They had those already. A little bit of a savings. Mm -hmm. Excuse me? Yeah. A little bit of a savings. A little bit of a savings, that's right. 
And then the consumables is based upon the usage with that with the, at, at the specific site. Okay. So they may need more for grade one at this school than they would for another one. All right. It is school based. Any further questions? Entertain a motion. I have a motion to approve the contract with Hooten Mifflin Harcott Publishing Company to purchase HMH Science Dimensions Interactive Work Text and Consumables for grades K through 5, fiscal impact $56,636.91, budget source, curriculum, and instruction. Second. I have a motion to second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Pass as have it. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you, Mr. Page. Thank you. Mr. Kentop. Good evening, board members, Dr. Salen, executive team. I'm here to present the contract for approval with Edmentum, who is the, uh, uh, the organization that does our blended virtual program. As you know, we're a part of ESMEC, and ESMEC contracts the Eastern Shore counties with Edmentum to provide a blended uh, virtual program. This year, um, we are paying, each county is paying directly to Edmentum that, rather than going through ESMEC. So we have approved this year 23 applications for students. We have received one for free from Edmentum. Each one of those has a cost of $6,250 for a total budget impact of $137,500. It is category three contracted services and it was budgeted for. At the same numbers we had last year, roughly. We're actually a, a few less, it, but yeah, it's right around the same numbers. But our cost factor per student did not go up this year, correct? It went down. It went down. There was a negotiation with Edmentum because of some issues that went on last year. And in order to keep our services, they they brokered a deal with ESMEC. It's actually cheaper this year. Do we need to ask what the issues were? What's that? Do we need to ask? scheduling uh, issues for classes it was like te okay. technical issues technical and classes. ability to get answers yeah. to questions quickly and things of that nature those are all acceptable answers yes <laughs> oh they, they were they were fixed right last year but in an effort to maintain our program they wanted us to they they worked out a deal with it with us Mac. and you feel us doing doing a good job with our students and stuff like that yes we've had a actually we had an 80 what did i say 86 87 percent success rate um, this year with, with credits earned and passing with middle school, it was it was very high. Nice. And are these the same hours as a normal school day or do they do different? They have um, they have a minimal hourly requirement, but it's because of the way that it's designed, it is designed to be flexible. So they have required time to be online live with their teachers. And then the additional time is on their own. So they have Monday through Sunday to complete it. There's a minimal amount that they have to log in and we, we put in for attendance in our power school program. And, and that's those guidelines are set by the state of Maryland. Right. So every school district across Maryland that's has to have a minimum, Correct. Mm, minimum face to face time, meaning screen time face to face because it is a completely virtual right. that in that aspect. What do we do if they don't have, I mean, they have, I must, they all have to have Wi-Fi. Yes, so they, we, we provide assistance. We provide that. As part of the application process, they allow, they let us know what they have and what they, they need, and we take care of that before it even starts. And what do you guys do if you have a student who opts to do this but then doesn't show up for class? We usually fill their seat mid-semester, like I mean, in the semester end. We it's diff depends on where they are in the semester. If we can get, if we can fill it right away, we do. If they don't, they'll credit us back our our monies if we don't use it. So it depends. There's different cutoffs during the semester between how long they've had the class or haven't had the class, and but they've been very good about that. Yeah, and we've had, we we haven't yeah. had a student that hasn't shown up. We've had students that may not have worked as well as they could have in the program, but honestly, we do a very uh, stringent job of going Election. through the applications and mm -hmm. making sure that the right students are in the program that this is going to be good for. Okay. So, so we make it make sure it's a good fit. For yeah. Right. It, we want to make sure it's the best educational program for them. Right. Okay. Any further questions? No. Entertain a motion. Uh, make a motion to approve the Edmonton contract for the blended virtual program fiscal impact $137,500. I have a motion to have a second. Second. All those bears say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Kentucky. Mr. Kip, Dr. Kibler. Doctor. Good evening again. Uh, tonight, bring to you um, 
uh, proposed revised calendar due to the Maryland State Legislature late in their session, um, moving general uh, the primary election day for the spring of 2024 to May 14th. The law says that we need to be closed for both general and primary election days. So what we're proposing here is to um, close schools and offices on May 14th. Um, not extending the school year because we have already broadcast what the proposed end date would be. And of the three embedded snow days we had in the calendar, we would just go down to two. And we'd also have the two inclement weather contingency days on the holidays as well. So if the inclement weather happens prior to those holidays, we'll pull it. We could. So it's uh, Martin Luther King Day in January, which is a tough one to do just because we don't get a lot of early snow necessarily, and then President's Day as well. Because once, you know, February, March, you can have something come up, and then all of a sudden we don't have any options at that point. Correct. So the bottom line is we're, we're going to have schools closed the 14th. Mm -hmm. That's the only change of this calendar. Mm -hmm. The other would be uh, inside the school system to find out to make sure we meet our minimum of 180 days we and we will so so if you actually counted in this in this revised in this revision if you counted student days you'd actually count 182 okay because we because we we'll have the two Thanks. embedded in right. there so it's likely if we had another year like this year we would be coming to you late next spring and saying we want to adjust the end of school back two days two days but we didn't want to do that change, no. any change no. at the end of school right now. Right. I think that's a good option. And this is affecting the entire state. They did it so late, everybody approves calendars in January and February. So everybody, well, all districts except for the six that are in the law that do not have to close for general and primary elections um, had to make this same change. But I know we've talked to our election board and it's a state issue across. I mean, we're not the only county that they utilize schools. Correct. You know, I mean, it's a it's a problem. Not a problem. Well, an issue. It is a problem. It you is know, a It's concern. a problem, but it's yeah. a, you know. Yeah. I mean, we've tried to look at that, but it's yeah. just. And what I, I didn't realize until this was coming back up that it's actually part of the law what districts can, can be closed. Right. So if we would ever even get the Board of Elections to agree to it, we would have to go have the law changed too. That's true, right, yeah. All right. Any other questions? No, nope. no. Nope. Then a motion to adjust a calendar to have May the 14th as a holiday or a day off for election. Uh, make a motion to approve the revised 2023-2024 school year calendar. Second. Motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Mr. Pender. Good evening, board members, superintendent, executive team. For the record, my name is uh, Sid Pender. Chief Operating Officer, um, I'm here before you tonight to seek approval um, of a project at Mattapique uh, Elementary School resurfacing the playground. Um, this is a uh, pass-through um, grant funding that will be funded entirely by the state. There is no local match associated with this. We are seeking approval of the contract between Game Time Cunningham Recreation and Queen's County Public Schools to provide the labor, equipment, and materials necessary to tear off and replace the existing poured in place pre K playground surface at Mattapique Elementary School. Uh, we are utilizing the Omnia uh, Cooperative Purchasing Agreement. Uh, what we currently have there is a poured in rubber place, um, or surface, sorry. And over the years, it's just wear and tear on it, and we've repaired it many times. This is the rubber tile that will go in there so that. If something happens, till we can remove a section of it without, without having to remove the whole entire surface. Um, this grant actually comes along at a great time because we are also seeking pre-K accreditation um, at many of our schools. And without that, uh, we probably will not receive the accreditation. Um, the amount of the project is $73,229. And again, that is funded through the um, pass-through grant, and we also have documentation they require for the county administrator to sign off, uh, giving their approval also. That's something we done this summer? We're going to, yep. This summer? Yep. Oh, okay. We got her. Okay, any other questions? Okay. Any other motion? I make a motion to 
motion to approve the contract with Game Time Care of Cunningham Recreation to replace the playground surface at Mattapique Elementary School. Fiscal impact 73,229. Budget source QACOS SB291. Pass through grant funding. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Savvy. Thank you. Okay. Now we're on to the buses. Yes, sir. Um, for you tonight uh, to seek approval for uh, Miss Virginia Brown of the Northern County Exchange LLC to purchase a new used or used bus for the 24-25 school year to replace bus 3310 as it goes out of service on August 24th, 2024. And we are talking not this year, but the following school year um, that that bus will be put in service. They would not receive the PVA until that following year to associate it with that bus. but with the delay in production, right. you know, we're, we've know. took us 10 months to get one of our own buses. Um, so they are seeking approval for that. We also do go through our budget and line up which ones are gonna be retired after the mandatory 15 years. So this bus will be at its 15th year. We do have that year marked on our um, documents. So this is really gonna affect 25, not yeah. this year's budget, but the following year's right. budget. That's but correct. That's, you got it. Mm -hmm. And we roll about the same amount of buses every, I'm not every year, but yes. I mean, what do we have, like 70, 80 contract buses? Uh, 72, I believe it is. Any other questions? No. No. Any motion? I make a motion to approve Virginia Brown of Northern County Exchange LLC to purchase a new or used bus to replace number 3310, fiscal impact, PVA budget source, FY25. Second. A motion is second. Also here to say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. The next item is again with Northern County Exchange uh, approval for Nancy Coleman, of uh, the Northern County Exchange LLC to purchase a new or used bus for the 24-25 school year to replace bus 8610 as it goes out of service on August 24th, 2024. Um, again, the bus just before this, it, it would PVA would not go into effect until the following school year. Um, but again, it's been its 15 year um, use of life. Any questions by the board? Nope. nope. Entertain a motion. Make a motion to approve Nancy Coleman of Northern County Exchange LLC to purchase a new or used bus to replace number 8610 fiscal impact PVA budget source FY25. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. And the last one uh, I have before you tonight is for LNS Bus Service. Um, approval for Lawrence Chenault of LNS Bus Service Incorporated to purchase a new slash used bus for the 23-24 school year to replace bus 10309 as it goes out of service this upcoming August. Um, <laughs> the likelihood of that is probably a used bus. But just so you know, the whatever the year the bus is, is the year that the PVA is associated with it. So it's not the PVA that, you know, we currently have. So we just go back to the PVA of uh, 18 or 17, so, whatever, yep. whatever year the bus yep. is. Yes, sir. Any other questions? No. Any motion? Can I make a motion to approve Lawrence Chenaud of LNS Bus Service Incorporated to purchase a newer used bus to replace number 10309, fiscal impact B PVA, budget source FY25. Second. A motion, second. Also, there say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. That's the end of our informational things. Our future meetings will be uh, August the 2nd, will be our regular school board meeting at 6 o'clock. And we will also have August 16th, a work session at 5 o'clock. Do I have any uh, information for the board? No. Entertain a motion to adjourn? I make, make a, a motion. motion to a second. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. Thank aye. you. Aye.